Marhaba, ana ismi Dijaji Prime, and that's where the Arabic stops with me. Welcome to Africa the Motherland. My name is Dijaji Prime, and today we're talking about Algeria. Now, formerly known as the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Algeria is a socialist country situated in the northern part of Africa or in a region known as the Maghreb basically all countries in the north of Africa, west of Egypt. The name Algeria is derived from its capital city, Algiers, and that word is also derived from an Arabic word, which I'm not going to pronounce because I don't want to make a fool of myself, but basically the meaning of that word is the islands. Now historically, Algeria has been under the control of various empires. You have the Phoenicians, the Romans, the Ottomans, and more recently with the French. Now, moving on to the flag of Algeria. So Algeria's flag is made up of a white band representing peace and purity, and green representing Islam. The flag also consists of a crescent and stars. This is a traditionally Islamic symbol. And though you'd see a number of other flags have this symbol, you notice that the Algerian flags, the crescent horns are longer, and this is symbolic of happiness. Also, the red color is an homage to all the martyrs' blood. Now, moving on to the geography of Algeria. Algeria is the largest country in Africa in terms of land area and is the 10th largest country in the world. If you want to compare, it's about over three times the size of a state like Texas. Now, despite its massive area, over 85% of the country is uninhabited. This is mainly because most of the country is in, um, covered by the Sahara Desert. So you find that most of the population is concentrated around its coastal regions in cities such as Algiers and Oran. Algeria has a population of 36 million people and is bordered in the north by the Mediterranean Sea and it shares the border with countries such as Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, and Western Sahara. Now, most of the land in Algeria is arid, with the terrain being made up of high plateaus and deserts. Despite having 17.3% of its land being used for agricultural purposes, only 3.1% of its land is actually arable, meaning land that could be used to grow crops and then 13.8% is used for pastures. So Algeria imports a lot of its food products. Now Algeria has some environmental issues, such as erosion and the improper disposal of sewage and petroleum waste products. Moving on to the government and politics in Algeria, Algeria has a presidential parliamentary system. Parliament is bicameral, meaning there are two chambers or two houses of parliament. The council of the nation is the upper house and has 144 seats. You also have the national People's Assembly, which is the lower house and has 462 seats, and including eight seats for Algerians in the diaspora. Now, the president appoints one third of the parliamentarians in the upper house, and two thirds are appointed through um, indirect voting via electoral college, whereas the lower house, all of them are voted in through direct polls or direct majority wins elections. So in the upper house, members serve for six years, whereas in the lower house, they serve for five years. Now, aside from appointing parliament members, the president is also responsible for appointing his cabinet, basically his ministers, and also for appointing the prime minister. The current president of Algeria is Abdul Aziz Bouteflika. Now, the current prime minister of Algeria is Abdul Malik Salal. Your mother has to be a citizen of Algeria in order for you to be a citizen. The other option is to li have lived there for at least seven years and to become a citizen via naturalization. Algeria's legal system is a mixture between French and Islamic law. Going back to presidents of Algeria, I'll just give you a brief summary. So Ahmed Ben Bella was the first president of Algeria and he served between 1963 to 1965. I hope I pronounced this correctly. Colonel Huari Boumedin was president from 1965 until he died in office in 1978. Colonel Chadli Ben Jadid was president between 1978 to 1999. Now, during his tenure, there was an economic downturn in which the oil prices had fallen and there was unemployment and there were lots of protests. In 1988, multi-party democracy was introduced into Algeria. Prior to the introduction of multi-party democracy, the National Liberation Front was essentially the dominant party in Algeria. In December 1991, elections were held in Algeria. And when it became apparent that the Islamic Salvation Front, also known as FIS, had won 188 seats and was poised to win a majority in the second round of the elections, 
um, the army stepped in because it was perceived by the secular elites that these were extremists. So the military intervened and postponed the elections. Now, the military forced Chadley to resign and postponed the elections. So as a result of that, there was a sort of insurgency because the military had clamped down on the FIS and FIS had rebelled. As a result, there was a civil war in Algeria between 1992 to 1998. So at the time of the military coup, Mohamed Boudiaf took over in January 4th, 1992. He was assassinated by his bodyguard, Lemin Zeruel, I'm sorry I'm butchering these names, was appointed chairman of the highest state council between 1994 and 1999. After that, the current president, Abdul Aziz Bouteflika, took over. Now, despite being president for 17 years now, since 1999, Bouteflika still has a decent approval rating because he's credited with stabilizing the economy and curbing the conflict during the civil war. Now moving on to the people and culture of Algeria. Algeria has a very rich and diverse history and culture, being a home to various empires and also influenced by various cultures. The three biggest influences or you could say aspects of Algerian culture would be the Berber, Arabic and French. Now though most Algerians are Berber in origin, only a small minority, forming 15% of the country's population, define themselves as being Berber. Now this can be attributed to the fact that there was, you know, an Arabization or due to the Arab conquest. Just so you aren't confused, Berber is a tribe native to Northern Africa and it crosses various countries. So there's a bit of a difference as you go through each country. The languages spoken or used in Algeria are Arabic, which is the country's official language, French, which is the lingua franca, and Berber or Tamazite, which also forms functions as a sort of official language and a spoken language. Now coming to music, most of Algeria's music consists of poetic Arabic folk tales which tell stories or generational stories from time to time and some genres of music are chabi and bedouin. Going on to food, there are lots of delicious foods out there. The most popular one will probably be couscous. I love my couscous. I cannot rate couscous enough. Now in terms of literacy, 80.2% of Algerians are literate. Breaking that figure further, you have 87.2% of males being literate and 73.1% of females being literate. Education is compulsory in Algeria within the ages of 6 to 15. Now, Algeria can be considered as a very progressive nation, with 60% of college graduates being women, a third of parliament being formed by women, and 70% of lawyers and 60% of judges being all women. Equality is enshrined in the Algerian constitution and also forms a major part in Algerian laws. The main reason for this is because Algerian women fought alongside Algerian men in the war of independence against the French. And they weren't just doing jobs like nursing or cooking, they were also spies and actual combatants. Now moving on to the economy, oil forms the basis of Algeria's economy. With 60% of budget revenues, 30% of GDP and earning over 95% in terms of foreign export. Now these exports in terms of oil and gas have enabled the country to maintain macroeconomic stability. However, this has hindered the development of other industries as there is heavy government regulation and an emphasis on state-driven growth. The external debt of Algeria is extremely low, forming only 2% of GDP. The currency used in Algeria is the dinar. Now, you could say that roughly one dollar is equal to a hundred Algerian dinar. Now, in summary, Algeria is a land of fighters, people who have rebelled against oppressive leaders. Now, a lot of people would come back and say, no, they are still under an authoritarian regime. But it has to be noted that Algeria is rather progressive and is fairly stable. With a rich and vibrant history and diverse culture, Algeria is indeed a gem within not just Africa, but the entire globe. I encourage you to go out and learn as much as possible as Algeria. I wish I could talk about Algeria, but I don't want to make this video too long. I'll leave the sources I used in making this video in the description below. Be sure to check that out and, you know, gain more information for yourself. I hope you were somewhat educated through watching this video and it has sort of inspired some sense of curiosity on this great country, Algeria. My name is Ijaji Prime. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you're new around here, why not click subscribe and I hope you have a blessed day. Goodbye.